big races. Welcome along to Water Shout live here at Doncaster. It is St. Ledger Day, and this, of course, is brought to you by the Racing Post, and it's sponsored by Betfred. A big day for them because they sponsor all the big races today, and we will be in-depth discussing race by race with a fantastic panel who've been up at the crack of dawn. We've got the brilliant St. Ledger trophy in front of us. It's so big, it's got security outside, <laughs> and we've had to sort of section us apart so we can get us all in. But a warm welcome to the team. Paul Keeley, I'll start with you because you're beside me. How are you? Yeah, very good. Closest I'll ever get to winning the St. Ledger, that is it? Look at that. <laughs> You've touched it too. Yeah, we have. Yeah, amazing. It was amazing when they brought it in. The man had special gloves, yeah. security outside. Yeah. Um, but joking apart, it's a fantastic race. The oldest classic of all. It, Where does it rate with you of, uh, of highlights of the season? Um, you know... I, it's one of those. It gets a lot of, you know, bad. Not I wouldn't say bad press, but I mean people criticise it because it's the end of the season. It's a staying race, and we don't do stayers anymore. But we do do stayers nowadays, don't we? Mm. Uh, and I think it's a really good race. Track the, the sort of breadth that it used to because very few of these big breeding operations can really do stairs. But those that do, how have we got such an open race when only three or four sets of you know connections can provide horses for this race? It's so open, we've got continuous, we've got desert hero, and we've got the two Gosner horses which they couldn't really split. So because the Tories had to pick the one that everybody assumed would be favourite for uh, wouldn't be favourite for a long time. So yeah, it's a it's a smashing race and it's surprising and testament to it that it managed to remain so competitive against all the odds really. And at the beginning of the week there was a lot of rain forecast. Thankfully we sort of had it earlier on and then yesterday was a beautiful day and it's set to be dry today which is always nice for anyone going racing and it's and it's not going to be run in a bog well that's right it might <coughs> even be just about good to soft ground today by the time they're actually racing it's raining i'm 30 miles as the crow flies up the road and it's raining there this morning but i hear it's all missed doncaster so we should be set fair and i'd say the ground will be you know we heard a lot of talk this week about soft ground horses I think probably too much, given that the ground's going to be probably easy side rather than, you know, properly soft ground for today's racing. And Matt, you get best turned out. Three people in <laughs> suit and all that. Good to have you here. How are you? How's the week been? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, really lucky to be here. It's, it's, it's a bit, always a great week. It's actually, before we actually started sponsoring, it's always been one of my favourite weeks. We've always got a great mix of racing here for these four days. So, yeah, it's one of my favourite ones and just delighted to be able to be sponsoring it. And, yeah, we're treated to a great race. Stories wherever we, we look, as you say, yeah, Brian's got four looking for a seventh win. Frankie's farewell, obviously, and, mm. and then potentially the King having a winner. So stories everywhere you go. Brilliant race, brilliant day. Exciting stuff. And you've touched on, obviously, you sponsored the, the St. Ledger, but also some very good races alongside it that yeah. have been well supported. Yeah, yeah fantastic. I mean, yesterday mm. we had with the Doncaster Cup with Trucian coming back. I thought it was absolutely superb and, and a really good ride as well. Very clever from Holly Doyle on the, on, the, on the bend. And, yeah, we've got, you know, a small field in the park stakes. So it's still a good contest. And although we've got another small field of the Champagne stakes, we may just see something special. So, yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. We might do. A very, very short mm. price favourite there who's been backed off the boards since an opening show of, of about four to seven I think is now four to eleven that horse you're talking about well, one man who hasn't as yet won the St Ledger is James Doyle he rides chess piece uh, for Simon and Ed Crisford been super consistent and I caught up with James yesterday great to have you with us James another beautiful morning in Newmarket have you been busy riding out first of all uh, I ha well riding out of a different kind uh, riding out my own horses so um, yeah Managed to squeeze them in before um, before joining you guys. Yeah, so it's been a busy morning. You're heading out to Doncaster <laughs> today and obviously the St. Ledger uh, tomorrow. You've got a, an interesting ride, chess piece. Um, a horse you know very well for Godolphin, Simon and Ed Crisford, who's basically been very consistent. Yeah, he's, I, I really, really like this horse. Look, I think on, on official figures, he, he definitely needs to raise his game. Uh, but he he's like you say he's pretty consistent, very solid. Um, he he won nicely at York um, back in the season. Then he ran a really good race in the Queen's Vars uh, on ground that was definitely a bit quick for him. Then he had a nice confidence booster up at Hamilton, 
And he, he ran a good race in the Gordon Stakes just behind Desert Hero. And um, I think key to him is definitely getting his toe in. The more rain, the better. And I felt though at Goodwood, I maybe he, he's quite um, an enthusiastic horse. What whilst he doesn't pull so much, he's quite enthusiastic. And I, I just uh, I've ended up in front on him quite a bit. And he, he can be a little bit difficult to gauge because he is quite enthusiastic. He can be quite difficult to gauge the pace on. And looking back on the race at Goodwood, I kind of wished that I'd have let him roll through his gears a bit earlier than than I might have done um, because he did respond quite well when Desert Hero beat me. Whether that's good enough to kind of reverse that form, I'm not sure. But I think I think there is a few little things that we can we can tweak to bring out more improvement. Mm, he was behind Gregory, um, who, of course, runs in the race as well at Ascot. But as you say, very different ground then. Do you feel like with the soft ground tomorrow that that might bring you closer together? I certainly think it will. Yeah, I mean, at, at Ascot behind Gregory, I actually sat close in behind Frankie and his horse just picked up slightly better on on what we know was fast conditions that day. And my fella didn't didn't really uh, let himself go. And I think the fact he was still able to to run a good race and finish third. Um, showed he, you know, he he's he's got a a great, uh, well, a good level of ability for for a race like this. So I think if the ground condi- conditions continue to be soft, then I think we're due a little bit more rain between now and and race time. So that'll be really welcomed uh, for him, and he he can definitely improve on on his efforts. I think. Ever since the rain arrived, obviously arrest has been the one that, um, that the, the market's been very strong and supportive towards. Do you see that as the one that you've got to beat? Yeah, it can't, can't have been an easy decision for Frankie. Obviously, um, he, it sound, sounds like he made his mind up yesterday. And I, I would imagine he's gone for the kind of proven horse that will definitely stay. We know he's a relentless galloper arrest. And and the soft conditions we saw what he did at Chester that day and and at Newbury he went a relentless gallop the whole way and hit the line strong so I would imagine that that kind of swayed his his thinking um Gregory's obviously a, a, a solid horse he's he's done nothing wrong at all I thought he did well at York um in in a race that that it got quite tactical in terms of Frankie obviously wanted to ensure a, an end-to-end gallop but he got pestered for the lead he had a penalty that day Gregory as well but his last furlong was pretty good. You know, he he hung in there and he actually hit the line well. He didn't drop away. So I think, yeah, I, I'm not too sure between those two. And then obviously you've got Continuous who who did well to win the um, Voltager that day. And it, it looked like the race was set up for him. He sat back off um, what was a hot speed and closed late on. But as we know, it's completely ground. Uh, the ground conditions are going to be completely different on Saturday. Moving on from the St. Ledger, you ride Aku Najla in the 10 past four for Roger Varian. Do you know much about him? I don't, to be honest. I think he he he's a horse that I think was quite highly thought of um, at one stage and just things haven't quite gone together. Um, certainly in his last run at York, he wasn't beaten all that far, but his run before that at Ascot uh, behind Garley was pretty good. Um, I would imagine the ground conditions should should be okay he's ran on good to soft ground before and coped the okays by Kingman and they they tend to to um they're pretty versatile so that shouldn't be a worry uh obviously a small field so it'll be pretty tactical um but yeah that's all I can give you on Aku Najla. <laughs> Regards the season you can tell us plenty about that because it's been pretty good are you happy with it strike rate's very good at the moment. Yeah it's been it's been good like before um before the Yorkshire Oaks, it was quite quite tough. Though those um, rides at the top level were a bit thin on the ground, and I think obviously it's difficult with our own stable not not sort of having an influx of of good horses, which we did the year before. Um, so that that has left a bit of a void. So it has been difficult, and I guess when you're not winning at, at that top level, it, it's difficult for people to look to you for spare rides. So. It has been a bit tough. The numbers are fine, though. I'm happy with the numbers. And um, it, obviously, Warm Heart came along and it was fantastic to keep keep the ride on her in the Verme. And she was super tough. And she, she's given me some fantastic days that, that have made my season, really. I was just about to touch on her. She did so well to win the Verme. She stumbled pretty badly at the start, didn't she? She did, yeah. She kind of, she jumped pretty quick and she just slipped and lost her footing. And as she went to get 
uh, find a leg. She slipped another twice after that. So we, we were on the ground for several several strides and she, she was very brave to pick her legs up. And then the race was a little bit messy, not much pace on early. So we were a bit stuck in the middle of the, the ruck, uh, but we were able to squeeze forward without using too much petrol. And it was just a case of getting out of a tight pocket um, from from the home turn as we know those french races when they don't go quick it can be um it can be quite difficult to get yourself out into clean air but thankfully i had a very willing partner she's not overly big but she's very brave so once she got through she picked up good and did her usual just took her eye off the ball a bit late on but she doesn't stop she just pricks her ears for the cameras and it's a pretty good stable that of aiden o'brien to be getting uh, good spare rides from at the moment <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's it's um, you know the the one of the biggest global kind of superpowers we have in racing, and obviously a- Aiden O'Brien's record is incredible: four thousand winners and x amount of classics and Group Ones. It's incredible. So no, it, it really is. Um, it's quite uh, fulfilling to um, get a spare ride for them and, and to, to repay the faith they've shown in me by, by offering me the ride to, to win on her a couple of times. It, it's, it's very satisfying and a great sense of fulfillment. Um, does, I do get that feeling. So, um, I understand how important it, it all is. And it's great to, to have got that winner at the top level for her. He'd been with Godolphin for a long time with Frankie heading off in his own different directions. There's lots of chat about who's going to go to John Gosden and, your name is one of them that um, that comes into the mix. Do, do you have anything to sort of say about that? Yeah, like, I mean, obviously people will, it's that time of year, isn't it? And obviously with Frankie leaving, the, the sort of rumour mill does begin to work. But um, yeah, from I'm, I'm very happy in, in the situation I'm in. Um, I think obviously we, we, we've been a bit thin on the ground this year in terms of um, numbers. But as we've seen in the past, that that you know forms only temporary class is permanent we have a great system up at Moulton Paddocks um it's a tried and tested um system so when we get the ammunition we can fire so yeah we'll sit tight um no, no news on on any other situation so um no we'll keep doing what what we're doing and and see what happens and regards the rest of the season any particular horse that you're looking forward to riding I'd love to ride Warm Heart again in the Breeders' Cup, but sadly that that won't happen. Um, obviously Ryan will be over there, and I'm sure he'll ride her. But um, I guess Shaquille, like if if I got the opportunity on Shaquille again, if if he were to run in in the sprint on Champions Day, obviously whatever happened uh, last Saturday at Haydock was clearly not his running. I know there's been a lot of speculation about. Um, Maybe he was ridden a bit more, a bit too prominently, or I'm I'm not sure, but I think people are fooled into thinking after those two runs at Group One level, he did miss the break by five lengths, and you can't you can't make a horse miss five lengths and then lead after a furlong. You know, you, there's only so long they can do that. And before before those races, he'd made all in like three starts. So it, I, I, it, the fact he was tailed off last, admittedly, I wasn't hard on him. But the fact he was tailed off last has to show he's he's clearly there had to be. I know nothing's shown um, up on tests and things like that, but maybe he had an off day or whatever. But anyway, one thing we do know, it wasn't the Shaquille that, that we're used to seeing turn up. So I'm sure when he gets a bit of ease in the ground, I'm not saying the ground was the issue at Haydock, but he, he does show a liking for, for ease in the ground. And I'm sure when he gets that and he, if he turns up uh, the Shaquille, we know on Champions Day, he, he'll be very tough to beat. Yeah, I hope so. He's been sensational this year. Quick word on the winter. When do you head out to Dubai? Is, is that the plan? I think the, the plan will be to to travel. I travelled backwards and forwards last year uh, for the first time. So after doing, I think, around 12 years of living out in Dubai through the winter, um, I quite like staying here. I find um, I can keep a bit busier whilst I'm here. So um, that kind of helps me w- with my weight and things. So um, that will be the plan just to fly in for those Fridays and then fly back out. Gives you the opportunity to go uh, to go hunting plenty as well. James, thanks very much for joining us. Good luck tomorrow and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emma. Have a good weekend. Talking about a chess piece, amongst many other things, and his thoughts on the ledger. Well, we'll get on to that in a little bit because we're going to skip through the races, as you'd expect, from the beginning. We get underway at 1.50 with the Betfred Champagne Stakes, a group two for two-year-olds, 
Now, Matt, not a great, not a big field here, but it's pretty select and we could have something very smart that's going to be a very short price favourite. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Caldian won it last year and went on to win the Guinness, so have we got something similar here? We've got Rosalian, he's just needs to 2-5 to five slightly, but say he's been really well backed. He's 4-7 to seven after Dex were made. Iberian's at 7-2. to two. Got 10 to 1 Mountain Bears behind Iberian in the vintage. They were second and third there. And then uh, somewhere at 12 to 1. I mean, he was, he was at a 5 to 2 to beat Rosalie in Ascot. And he returned lame. And David Manusi said he's probably the best juvenile he's ever had. So maybe he could be the one. But I, I think they are going to be chasing home Rosalie. I mean, Richard Hannon's always, like he said, he's always like this horse. And God, he was so impressive. Really impressive at Ascot. So, But, you know, he's skinny. He is skinny. Keith, I'm going to start with you. Um, your thoughts at the prices. Well, yeah, I mean, wrote up yesterday and thought four to seven Rosali and you know hard and in fact possible to oppose. We I was at Ascot when he won uh, that day and he just looked extremely good and he actually looked a bit of a two year old. I'm not exactly the the sort of best uh, paddock watcher there is, but he just he looked all power and he looked all about a horse they're going to kick on with <coughs> this year. He's one of the few two year olds in Britain that have really really caught the eye this year, really caught the attention, and I you know. Once he's two to five, you start looking at things like Sunway, you start looking at things like IB <coughs> and the massive reputation he seemingly got at home. But really, Rosalian is probably the best juvenile in Britain this year. I expect because of the way he's built, they'll kick on this year. The Hannans have got a good history in this race and they'll probably go for this to try and, and go to the Dewhurst next. So, you know, at those prices, you can't help but get tempted by others. But he is over, overwhelming favourite deserves to be. Mm. Uh, Kiel's a quick word from you. Iberian, I think, as you've touched on, huge reputation. And Charlie Hills talks about him like he's an absolute monster at home. I think at the, at the prices, he's tempting. It's a, it's a little bit tempting. I mean, it's, it's, it's very easy to get carried along with the enthusiasm. The one thing they've said about him all the time is they, you know, I mean, they 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 decided to go at Goodwood. Uh, uh, they knew that the ground was going to be too soft for him, and I think the nearer he gets to good, the better a horse will see. Mm. Uh, but you know, Vasallian did just look very, very, very good at Ascot, and the form has worked out really, really well. I mean, he won by four lengths to run up. Al Musmax won in a decent company since. Uh, Dancing Gemini was well beaten. Has come out one twice since, including here yesterday. So, you know, I think the form stands up. I'm finding him very hard to oppose. I mean, I don't get stuck in at two to five and the, and the, and the likes of that. But uh, <laughs> I'll probably, I'll probably sit it out. Quick word on the ground, because we, we haven't spoken in depth about it. The forecast at the beginning of the week when we did our programme on Tuesday was, was horrendous. Thankfully, it hasn't materialised. But according to some jockeys yesterday, varied reports from heavy ground to good ground. Well, there was some plenty, of time, the well, there was plenty of time ago we were saying that on Thursday it was... Sorry, yeah, on Thursday it was borderline heavy. You know, I think it's still, I think, think it's still well on the soft side myself. Uh, obviously, it's going to have dried out a bit, but you get up in the morning in, in the autumn and you know how heavy the dew is. Mm. So there's plenty of moisture in the ground. It doesn't dry out like it would do in June or July, you know, in, in a day because, you know, it was, it was not lovely and warm yesterday, wasn't it? You know, but uh, it's just not going to dry out that much. You know, I bet people start calling it dead today. That was what, you, know, you get the jockeys coming in and they say it's dead. Uh, so it won't suit some, uh, and it will suit some others. But you know, it's not. We haven't got extremes of ground. I think that's that's for certain. Mm, which is obviously, which is obviously a good thing. The Betfred uh, Portland follows it to two twenty five, a five and a half for furlong handicap. Matt, how do they bet here? This is open. Yeah, there, yeah. Last year's winner, Call Me Ginger, is only two pound higher. Is your favourite thirteen to two Kings Lynn, who used to be in the colours of the King, now for Andrew Baldin's uh, own colours at seventeen to two Chipstead. He went close in this. A couple of years ago, he's at 10 to 1, massively higher in the handicap. No, now, 11 to 1, each happy romance brings a bit of class to the race. Kim and Grace. Uh, I quite like T's spirit here, 12 to 1. Got a great record here at Donny. Four runs, a win, a couple of seconds and a third. And uh, with me and Nichols, he's claimed to see £3 below that winning mark. So, drawn right up against his stands rail, 22. I, I talk about the ground. I don't think there's been a, really a bias all week. I think it's been pretty fair wherever you've been. I, I don't think there's been any bias at all. So, <coughs> obviously, the first one we'll find out in the Portland. Uh, but I've hung my hat on T-Spirit right up this stand side rail in 22. Kiels, this has got your name written all over it. Probably your favourite race yeah. of the day. Oh, oh, absolutely, yeah. As soon as I see 22 runners, I don't know what's wrong with me, to be honest. <laughs> you know I mean? Because the one thing you know is, is, is when you've got big field handicaps, like you can go on long losing runs. Uh, you know, and, and you know, I hope I haven't restarted one, but the last week or so hasn't been too good for me. But uh, yeah, it is definitely my sort of race, and I, I'm a massive fan of Kings Lynn. Uh, now he's not he's a horse that doesn't win the sort of races he should have won but he's a very talented horse he's running group company a lot he's actually won he won the uh, 
Temple Stakes last year, Group 2 Temple Stakes. He's won a couple of listed races. He's won a sales race here. He's never actually won a handicap. But he has dropped down the weights uh, this season, despite showing he's every bit as good as he, he ever has been. In fact, on RPRs, his second run this season at Chester, when attempting to give £10 to Nymphadora, who was one enlisted company since, is now rated the same as him, uh, that was a, a, an equal career best. So he's as good as he ever was. And the other thing is, he likes Doncaster. He's very good here. I mean, OK, he got beaten miles in the cabbage, but that was bottomless ground. Now, I think his horse only just really gets six furlongs. So six furlongs and bottomless ground, no hope to him whatsoever. Mm. So that's what he had last time at Goodwood. But as I said, his second run this year, which was after being beaten miles in the cabbage, was one of his best. He's got four other runs at Doncaster, one, two, two, one. Uh, the only two horses have beaten him are Starman uh, and Abarama Gold in those four runs. So I think his form is rock solid. He's drawn five. Uh, I'm not worried about the state of the ground. The most of the pace is middle to high, but there is pace in eight, nine, and ten. So he should be able to sit sit directly behind it. So, so yeah, I think he's got a massive chance. Other one I like is Dream Composer. I, I've backed that one as well. Um, has only gone up a couple of pounds this season, despite winning three times, uh, and just ran on really well. Just just uh, beat Chipstead for third last time at Ascot uh, in in the Shergar Cup invariably finishes very strongly at five, so five and a half could be absolutely perfect for him. Uh, they're my two against the field in what is, you know, seven to one the field. We know how open it is, but uh, they'd be my two. Keith, did you enter this race with the same enthusiasm as, uh, as Keel's here? <laughs> I absolutely did. Uh, it's big sprint handicaps are what I'm doing in the flat season now. And yeah. I'm, this, this is stronger. The Air Gold Cup next week won't be stronger than this. This is dead, dead competitive. So hard, and I'm going to be like Keels. I'm going to take two against the field. And Dream Composer is my next best, too. Uh, he just goes through races like a horse that's going to thrive in big fields one day. He's only had one go. It was in the Wokung- Wokingham. He wasn't in the best place, and that was sort of six anyway. This is really a five for long race with a bit of a twist. You know, people get hung up on the five and a half thing, but it's really a five for long race for horses that hit the line hard. Dream Composer is one of them, as is Kim and Grace, who's my top selection. She won a listed race at Lingfield in February and has dropped a stone in the weight since that for not doing an awful lot wrong. Our last two runs, she's been running over pretty sharp fives. One at Chepstow, she basically got run off her feet a little bit. And then at York, where she finished about eighth or ninth, but in two strides, she'd have been fourth. Just really got going late at York. And she, this sort of test is going to suit her ideally. Doncaster's a sort of track where rattling home is going to get you more joy than certainly you would at York normally, mm. uh, all th- other things being equal. And for a horse as well handicapped as she is, she's right down near the bottom of the weights. She's in 17, as Keel says, there's no pace lower than 8. And you've got 20 and 21, you've got Dakota Gold and uh, the King Power horse, that his name I've temporarily forgotten. Who's, the big board. Yeah, the big, who's going to go off and set a good... They're, they're probably the biggest pocket of pace for me, 20 and 21, and Kim and Grace is in 17. So I see a lot of action on that near side, so she's going top for me. Good stuff. Well, the Betfred Park Stakes is up next at three o'clock, and this could be a good opportunity for Spycatcher dropping in grade. Matt, how did they work? Yeah, it could be. I mean, it, it is a good opportunity for Spycatcher. I was surprised it was so short in the in the Jatland, in the uh, pre Morris de Geese, though. I mean, it was very short that day in, in Group One company. I'm not sure he's done anything to, to deserve that but look he's, he's, he's back down to group two he's back up to seven films and he's on his soft ground so yeah he's six to four favourite Carl Burke had a very impressive winner here this week Sandrine 100 to 30 uh, for Andrew Baldwin who's just behind audience in the um, at uh, York wasn't he behind Kinross that's at five to one separating them is Big Gulls who has been well supported this week obviously disappointed handicap last time we saw that one but Ryan Moore booked that's at four to one so I, I would side with audience I was really impressed with the winning the criterion despite him going right across across the track and there was a decent effort at York obviously the ground hopefully is drying out a little bit for him that'll suit him better but I just wanted to be a gay spy catcher I thought he Mm. was short yeah as you mentioned good second in the city of York Stakes last time for audience a spy catcher um, won a group three at Deauville only beaten a short head last time out as you touched on in the pre-Morris de Geese is this the one they have to beat? I, I think so, very much so, just because of, of of the conditions. Now, you know, it was soft ground when he won that Group 3 in France. He won it very easily as well, three lengths. Uh, and he's only gone down by a short head in the Group 1. Uh, and, you know, I think he's a good bit of form. He's a tough horse. He stays seven furlongs well. He's, you know, he's won over the trip uh, more than once. Uh, and he's thriving as well. This is, a, this is a horse, he might be five, but he's really, really thriving in his hip-top form. I don't think audience wants any cut on the ground at all. Uh, that would worry me. Uh, I don't think Jumby's going to be massively happy on it. I don't think Pogo will be massively happy on it. So you've got 
Sandra and Biggles. Pogo, uh, you followed that off uh, a few times this I year. love old Pogo, like, you know what I mean? But he's, I he, he, he's a bit too far north, isn't he? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, I think he's very much the one to beat. Do I want to Do I want to get stuck in at around six to four? I, again, it's not not my sort of punt, but uh, uh, I have. I did back him anti post as soon as we knew it was going to rain. Uh, <laughs> you know, and... and you know, I think I, I think he's the most likely. I do think he's the most likely. You don't fancy six to four? Would you like three to one in a double with Rosa Lyon? Uh, yeah, that could that could that could be. Uh, that's quite that, an appealing bet. Oh, that's what we're going to do. Value, yeah. Yeah, that will, that's what we're going to do. We're going to that sort of double value, that. Is that yeah. more, more appealing yeah. for you? Rosa Lyon is what we call an enhancer, <laughs> <laughs> a kicker. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, we, 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 we've we've heard it here. Yeah, that's available now, so you can have that. Yeah, okay. Paul Keeley special double. <laughs> Keith, what's your take on this? Well, I pretty quickly got it down to two. You know, I've got Pogo's been bad out of form. Jumbi, we've mentioned, yeah, is going to want a bit of faster grind. I'm not sure the way audience goes about things is the way you get races won at Donny. And I can't remember the last time Sandrine really saw a race out. So I got it down to uh, Spycatcher and Biggles pretty quickly. Um, and Spycatcher, maybe the enhanced double would change that for me, but it was just a boring bet at 6 to 4. So I was going to make the case for Biggles, really. His form's. Mustard all season, really. Obviously, he's won that Bunbury Cup. He was on the wrong side in the international at Ascot, which was won by Baradar, who, of course, won yesterday. Last time Biggles ran at this track, he was trying to give six pounds to Baradar uh, last November and obviously couldn't quite manage that. But clearly, that itself is a good bit of form. He's got loads of sort form on softer ground. It was heavy when he's run behind Baradar here before. And he's a horse that's plainly going the right way. He, so I just thought he was the one against Spycatcher if he wanted to try and get him beat. I can absolutely see the case for Spycatcher just going in. The Morris the Guest is one of the worst group ones of the year, to be honest. It was this year. Uh, but his form still does. If the horse from France turns up, he deserves to be 6-4, to four, I think. OK. Well, now on to the big race of the day. It is, of course, the Betfred St. Ledger, the oldest classic, a mile six and a half furlongs. Matt, the key question, will a rest definitely go a favourite here or not? Well, that's what we've all been thinking. Of, but as soon as Frankie switched with it right, the, the money's going to come for a rest. But we're really surprised it hasn't materialised yet. As yet, obviously, he was back to early on in the week um, when that rain did come. So maybe punters have, have already who are on have already who have got a back who are already on. So, but he hasn't come yet. And waiting for money for the Kings, or she'd imagine there'd be a public sway just getting on the Desert Hero. But surprisingly, it's been continuous. That's been the one overnight for support. He's now three to one clear favourite. We've got Gregory in there at four to one. It's nine to two then uh, arrest, and then Desert Hero eleven to two. But I suspect, I mean, what we're still like, it's what seven hours away from the start. I suspect that there will be support for. Arrest and Desert Hero at some point in the next few hours. It was the same in the Derby, wasn't it? The, yes. rest, the money for Arrest came during yeah. the day and built up, and he ended up going off favourite for the Derby, which I reminded myself on during the week. I'd forgotten, mm. totally forgotten he'd been favourite. Thought it was but a but the funny thing is, he he was ended up favourite for the Derby on ground that anybody with a <laughs> pair of eyes could tell you that he wasn't going to handle. <laughs> uh, and now he's not favourite for a ledger, you know. Uh, on ground that he uh, like, on ground that he like. But I think uh, once know, the Frank, once the once the obviously I know the story's been rolling for us in the racing in the racing world. But once it gets into the public domain and the people start coming in the shops this morning and they start reading the newspapers, I, I fully expect the Frankie factor will be a massive factor this afternoon. Yeah. Mm, okay. So yeah, up in the air, what will go? A favourite. You've been across to Ireland, haven't you? What did you learn there? I have, yeah, very lucky I was. Yeah, I went to, to Ballydore. Obviously, I know Brian's got four. He's won it six times uh, before, but obviously they are a big fan of continuous. He uh, won the great Voltager. Uh, well, obviously, Gregory went off really quick. It was a very strong pace. But I just put the question to you, you know, Brian, he knows what it takes to win a St. Ledger. Could continuous be a seventh victor for him? Talk about continuous, then. He's won a big trial on the great Voltager. How's he? Yeah, very well. He came out of the race very well. Um, he's a horse that has class. Um, he's a horse that you can take a time over a mile and six, um, but always was a very classy horse. We were delighted with him in the Voltager. Um, Sorry, they yeah. went a really good clip in the Voltager yeah, as well, didn't really, they? Went a really good gallop, so it was a proper search of a mile and a half, and uh, uh, Ryan took his time on him and came through and won very nicely. And he's done plenty of travel, he's been to York a couple of times, he's been to France, so that won't bother him? He has, no, no, he's a good traveller. Uh, I think the second race he won was a group race in France, so he's been used to travelling, but very off-handed horse, really. Always a fascinating day with Aidan O'Brien. I bet it was a brilliant morning because you hadn't been before, had you? No, no, literally. As soon as you go in, bang, Nijinsky is there when he left. And I was, I was from there, I was just in awe anyway. Um, but I was, the, the, the interview, the full interview, is, is available on our YouTube channel. And it's really good at the end because he says, I want, ideally, a, a statue on the right-hand side of the drive when you come in with a Triple Crown winner. And that is it every single year. Obviously, it was Augusta Rodan, hopefully, this year. 
they're looking at maybe City of Troy, Diego Velasquez next year, maybe, but they are always strive. And we mentioned earlier about stayers, about the St. Ledger kind of pigeonholders, you know, not, not the race it used to be, but they are focused, laser focused on trying to get a triple crown winner. And they like say they breed, they breed for, for the staying division and, and they absolutely love it. So we're really thankful to have them in the game. It, it was just immense. If you ever get the opportunity, never say no. No, it's amazing his attention to detail, isn't it? I mean, he does oh. not miss a trick. The music, there's music going on as a parade in and yeah, nothing at all. I mean, he was brilliant with his time. He gave us all his time. And then as soon as it's finished, he's off and he's doing something. Else. And yeah, absolutely fantastic. So did you leave with a very positive vibe of Continuous? Yes, and not just from him, from people around the yard as well. Uh, oh, you went been... scurrying, did you, by oh, yeah, the scenes? Oh, yeah, talking to people <laughs> and they say, oh, that, that, hopefully there's our ledger winner. And you, you did get that vibe. I mean, we saw in the Great Voltage, yes, he was impressive. I'm not conclusively sure the trip is, is what he wants. I mean, he was, all, he was their French derby horse, which is obviously over 10 furlongs. And the pace in the Great Voltage, it was, it was obviously it was very, very fast. And Ryan Moore just easily came through and won as he liked, really. So I don't think he proved this is exactly what he wants. But, yeah, then the pedigree suggests hearts cry. Galileo Med, the pedigree suggests he, he will stay. But, you know, they've got Tower of London in here. He's definitely going to stay. His brother to Capri who's already won it. And I, I'm, I'm a bit of a Tower of London fan. I think he should have won that Bahrain trophy. Um, and he, he was another one that they were obviously the, 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 they were always looking at running in here. And they weren't too downbeat about his chances either. Look, they weren't downbeat about any of them. They're all for running in a ledger. But no, very much continuous, clearly the number one. OK, well, before we start talking about Frankie and Arrest, let's hear from the trainer, John Gosden, because Betfred went to see him. Arrest came back after a bit of a break post Royal Ascot at Newbury and what was was very impressive. Is, is yeah, we're very pleased with him. Uh, he took his race very well. He's in top order. But I think he'll, you know, if that's good to firm at Doncaster, I think you find him probably heading to Paris for the Chardonnay, a race like that, rather than be trying to run him. He's a, he's a lovely horse, but he rolls his knee. And to that extent, he'll, he'll enjoy more of what I call the autumn ground. Gregory, last seen finishing third in the um, Great Vulture Estates at York. What did you make of that, of that performance? Well, he went a little quick early. When I saw the early fractions, I thought, ooh, 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 we've just gone inside 12 seconds for a furlong. I think there were three of them trying to make the lead in order to boss the race, and they got all got in a bit of a scramble together early on. So I think you, you're not going to do those fractions over the first three and, and, and finish. Uh, it was obvious where the winner came from, 20 lengths out the back. So to that extent, look, he actually ran a very good race. Uh, and when Frankie accepted the fact, put his hands down, he galloped out well to the line and after the line. So I was probably very impressed from a point of view as, as, a, as a hard piece, a strong bit of work than as a race. He came out of it in very good order. If the weather is set fair, that won't bother him with being top of the ground. So, you know, I'd be very happy with them with him after the race. Uh, Matt, how's he come out of the race and what's his preparation looked like since since your Well, I think, you know, you had a strong race in the Voltager. I, I, I've had luck going from the Voltager to the Ledger, but often I feel it's quite close if they get a hard race. Uh, and, and I've had a couple bounce, <laughs> that can happen. But I, I'd be very pleased with him at this stage. He he's, seems in great order and very content in himself. He's got a great mind. He's a pretty laid-back character. I trade the, both the mother and the father, and he's inherited all their, all their good traits of their mental attitude towards racing. Um, and he was on race as a, as a two-year-old, um, and then just the four starts a day. Has he always shown, shown you great potential? Look, he was just a, a big boy. He's a very tall horse, and uh, he just needed to fill his frame out. And to that extent, we gave him all the time he required, and he's done nothing but shine this year. And I think he'll enjoy the distance, and we're perfectly aware it's, uh, it looks like being a very, very good vintage uh, St. Ledger. Interesting, as always, to hear the thoughts of John Gosden. Kills, I'm going to start with you. How tough a decision was it for Frankie de Torre? Uh, I'd imagine it would be very tough, to be honest. I mean, I, you know, I think it's one of these races where there's nine runners you can make. I think you can make reasonably lucid cases for at least seven of them, and the two that the two that you say are rank outsiders are trained by Aidan O'Brien, who, who was uh, <laughs> made a hundred of winning with, with rags from the front in classic. So, uh, yeah, I think it was. I, I think it was probably very hard. I don't think there was any doubt whatsoever that he would have been riding Gregory if the ground had been good. I mean, the rest might not even have turned up. Uh, but uh, he's chosen a rest, uh, and I think the thing about a rest is he absolutely cannot handle firm ground. I think he'd be fine on good. 
Uh, but he hits the ground so hard that when it, you know, he just jar himself up if it's really fast. So uh, he looked really good in the Jeffrey Freer. Um, obviously, uh, Ching Shi was second that day, only finished fourth uh, here earlier in the week against Phillies. Uh, so you could say that form isn't the strongest in the world, but you've got to remember he absolutely smashed up Adelaide at Chester earlier in the season, and Adelaide's been second to, to August Rodin in, a, in, a, in an Irish derby and uh, and one on um, Irish Champions Weekend last year. So he, last week, so it, it's it's he's got some very good form, almost, almost the best in the race, uh, and you know, but it must it must have been hard. I mean, I think there's a little bit of reality slipped into the market with continuous becoming favourite because when we all saw it at York, we just thought. Well, he's gone too fast on Gregory, uh, and that'll be turned round. But when you look at it, continuous actually won the race pretty easily. The one thing I will say is that, I mean, obviously, Frankie went, he actually went faster early doors on Gregory than he did on Mostadaf over a shorter trip in the, in the international. Uh, I was looking at the, I was looking at the sectionals, and if I can remember rightly, I think he was still the second fastest in the final furlong, Gregory. So he was, he was definitely staying on again, right? You know, so he's going to stay forever. So he's a massive threat. Uh, you know, and you know, when this your final classic, uh, and you've got a decision like that to make, and you know you might have made the wrong one, it can't be. It and he's not, dominated this race over the years. Yeah, he's exactly. done so well. It cannot it. be easy. But again, that's the thing. He does ride this track really well, uh, and you know, I think he's gonna. I think he'll, he'll sit off the O'Brien pacemakers, uh, and as long as there's still enough cut in the ground, I think he's the one to beat. But I mean, I wouldn't rule out many. And the King's got a big shot with Desert Hero, you know. Very tough horse. Keith? Yeah, well, Keels has led lovely into what I was going to say about this race because, you know, I sort of almost pride myself on being the least sentimental punter in the room, so there's none of that involved. <laughs> I, said, honestly, I honestly think the King's horse might win this. I think Desert Hero is the most talented horse in this race. Now, those royal bloodlines, they can be quite quirky, and he's one of those, And but it's also got loads of stamina, this one, you know, Dartmouth's in there, and the Dam's other full sibling ran their best race of their career by £11 on... Uh, on over a mile six, on their only run over a mile six. So it's a really stamina laden pedigree. Uh, I think he's going to thrive over this trip. The talent he showed, because you could make the case in the King George V that he won at Ascot, they went too fast and he set it up for him, yes. But Chess Piece made it very difficult for him in the Gordon Stakes. You know, had the run of the race there. And he still came through and beat Chess Piece pretty handily. I'm a fan of Chess Piece. I think he's one of those horses that's going to like win one of those German Group 1s next year, you know, mm. a, a sort of softer ground, mile and a half race, as he gets older and stronger. This might just be a little bit soon for him, but he's a horse I like. Desert Hero gave him a bit of a kicking. And uh, just looks like a really, really good horse to me. I think he might end up being the most talented in the field because remember, on Racing Post ratings, the second best performance in this field is still arrests Chester Vaswin. Now, by this stage of the season, the Derby trials are normally a speck in the rearview mirror. Yet the second best performance in this race is arrests in uh, in the Chester Vaz. So it's there to be won by an improver, and I think that might be Desert Hero. How do you both see this race unfolding? Well, I think we're going to get a couple of uh, uh, a couple of uh, Aidan O'Brien pacemakers, and, and unless they're in there to uh, uh, con the others into uh, believing that that's what's going to happen, but yeah, I think we are, and I think Chess Beats will be up there as well. Uh, I think Frankie will pick his will pick his slot, uh, but as always in this letter, they get rolling very early in the straight. Whatever wins it is going to have to stay very very well. And this is one, one thing I said: you can make a reasonably lucid case with at least seven of the runners. Uh, something's going to win. Something's going to get beat thirty lengths. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we don't know what's what. I think the rest. I think Frankie might do it. Well, that's the thing with um, with Desert Hero, isn't he? He is a bit of a hostage to fortune with whatever goes on up front. He's going to be held up, and it's mm. all about what the pacemakers do. What James Doyle does on chess piece uh, off the back of that, you know, because he's he's been a front runner in the past. He's probably going to sit there and probably try and force it himself from quite a way out. So, yeah, a lot of tactical interest in this race as well as as well as a sort of form puzzle. Well, before we continue. I'll look through the rest of the card. Here's a good opportunity to have a look at some racing post offers. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper, from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month 
for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. We're not done yet. We've got the rest of the card to look at. The 10 past four, we've got a mile and a quarter handicap, but Matt, help us out here, will you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's only... D I was talking to uh, Paul earlier about this, uh, and I, I, I looked at the race, I thought, it's, something's going to fall in it, because I just don't think anything can win it. <laughs> uh, Laura Cal, you two to one favourite, but as the burnt fingers the last couple of times, uh, Akio Nigel, three to one, uh, he just doesn't win as often as you think he, he should. Similar like nine to two. I know uh, Keith's a big fan of Simply Sundown, five to one. And then you've got Massa Keeler, who's got so such an insp uninspiring form figures, but continues to fall down the handicap. And you know, don't forget, was he was fifth in the derby, wasn't he, uh, last year? He's at Ooh. 17 to Ooh. fourth in the derby, yeah, 17 to two. So... A tightly knit little contest, but one that I, I think I'll watch, please. Bypass. I feel like that's that's an easy out. Uh, yes. Well, I'm You're all, not getting a free pass here. Oh, horrible little race, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, I was looking at, uh, I was looking at, and I, I, I originally came down on simply Sondheim, and um, just because he was, you know, winning loads earlier uh, um, last season, uh, and he's. You know, he's a proven winner in the race, that's for sure. Uh, but I came down, I thought, well, you know, it's just a messy little race. Something's got to win it. I'm going to, if I have a bet, it'll be on the outsider. So I'm going to back Master Kayla. Now, obviously, he's literally done next to nothing since finishing fourth in the, uh, in the derby. But he was second to Adeo at this meeting last year. Ran to an RPO of 108 then. He's running off 90 in a handicap now. Uh, one of these days, he's going to bounce back. Berkshire Rocco started to bounce back yes. to Andrew Ball and finished fifth in the, in the Ebor. So at some point, he's going to bounce back. He's obviously ran very well on similar ground at, at this meeting last year, so I thought I'd give him a shot. But it is a guess rather than a firm opinion. Are you in the same camp, Keith, guessing your way through this race? No, I mean, it is a, race. It is a tricky little race and one that you want to maybe have a little go and want it at a bigger price. I would have maybe had a look at Lightning Company, had the ground been even softer than this. He loves a bit of soft ground. He gave Wooten's son a bit of a kicking on soft at, uh, in, at Pontefract, just up the road in, in April. Uh, but no, I really do quite fancy Simply Sontheim. Yes, he's got that really good winning rate generally, seven wins from his 13 starts. But when he's come off a break in more than seven weeks, he's won every time, he's three from three. He's got a really good record fresh. Um, George probably knows it. The trainer's in very good form and he's managed to pursue Dry and Moore to ride. You know, horses that win and win consistently, there's a lot of cash in that. I know ones beside a horse's name can often be death for the price, but isn't in this case. Simply Sondheim's actually easy enough to back, if anything, but I'm not worried about fitness. George Boy's a shrewd trainer and he's he's booked Ryan Moore for this, so he's not running him half fit and the horse has got that record fresh. And in a race that could easily be trappy, he just looks like a consistently progressive horse that should take a lot of stopping. 4.45, the Mar Maiden. Anything been well touted here? Uh, yeah, well, there's a few. I mean, Charlie Johnson's got the favourite, Dara Marl, who ran really well on debut at uh, at Sandown. And then Richard Kingscote, who's just signed a deal to, to be the new retained jockey to Ahmad al Sheikhi. He's quite sweet on this one. You know, I spoke to him yesterday. So that's fa favourite at 5-2. to two. We've got 4-1 to one then uh, for God's Widow, newcomer for, for Jonathan Thady Gosden. 6-1 to one Red Hot Whisper. See down the bottom there, Savvy Worry, 18-1. to one. I'm going to give the game away, Paul. I know you quite like that one. I'm going to go top price, 20-1, to one, that one. And uh, I'm going to get it out, actually, because we haven't got long left. Sonny Liston in the lucky last. We're going to go top price, 4-1. to one. I know you might like oh, that as well. So. Can I have a bit of that? Good more offer. So don't forget, right now, we've got 3-1 to one, the double, Rosaline and uh, Spycatcher. We've gone top price, 20-1, to one, Savvy Warrior in this race, which is Paul's pit. We'll find out why shortly. And 4-1, to one, Sonny Liston in the lucky last. What price, what price is treble? Quick mass. <laughs> I'll leave that with you. <laughs> about 400 to 1, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any ideas on the maiden? Give us some mathematical team? questions this time in the morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, but one thing I'll say about this, I don't, think it's, I don't think this will end up being a very good maiden. Uh, and so I'm thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a little each way bet on something that, that has shown someone. I thought Savvy Warrior, Warrior actually showed plenty at Foss Lass. I know it was only Foss Lass last time, but he got hampered and carried across the track and went straightening up afterwards. He he made ground again late on. Uh, and Connections have had some really good horses, uh, the Savvy, Savvy Knight, Savvy, uh, uh, Savvy Victory. Uh, and I suppose we associate the smaller stables, Stuart Williams, with not winning maidens, with getting horses mm. handicapped. But 
he was there to win at Foss last and he'd have gone close if he hadn't have been carried across the track. So I don't see any reason why he won't run his race again uh, here. And I don't think I don't think anything has you know shown great form here at all. Okay. So give him a go. Keith. Um, again, it's hard to have firm views on this. I mean, I think it'll probably be a strong meeting. We've got quite a lot of well-represented uh, and well-connected horses in it. The person, horse with the best form is Bellum Justum, who I like the profile of. Uh, the pedigrees, see the stars, the dam's uh, good half-siblings are Lahab, who was rated 118 RPR. And also Fox Tal, who's not in my good books, it's fair to say. I've lost money on him down the years, but second best runner of that horse. I was going to say, if he's in the pedigree, you want to take it on straight away, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> second best runner of his life's at Doncaster, <laughs> and he's a very talented... I mean, if he, I think he'd win this, to be fair, Peels. Uh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, but we've, we've he got, might not consent to. We've got talented horses that are shown to run well at Doncaster, is what I'm going to choose to uh, spin that pedigree. Yeah, well, Bellum Justin's got the best form, but he's already had two cracks, hasn't he? He okay. has already had two. But that's More the thing about two. maiden, it's why you're not, you're not going to be nap of the day it's fair to say no. in Maiden so but just I like that uh, that profile he's got coming in and uh, yeah so he was the one for me Matt now I know you're about to, to make a run for the door <laughs> there's, a couple, there's a couple of things I, I need from you before you yeah. go prices for the last yeah. and a best bet Right, in this order then. So prices, order will do. prices for the last. So I love this race. I think this is a really good race, a really good handicap. I know we'll, you'll talk at both of you, Emma and Paul, about Sunday Liston in detail. Don't forget, we are now top price four to one. You can have on that one. It is under thirty. But we are top price four to one. Six to one, Liberty Lane, who I really like. He won over a mile on debut, and then was uh, favourite second. He's around Wipe Hero at Newmarket. Travel like the best horse at Newmarket last time out behind Dutch Decoy. I think it's easy, man. I think it's right up his street. I really like that one. But also 6 1 Mille Bosque, third in a French derby, dropping down to a mile. That's interesting at 6 to 1. Uh, and so we go on and on and on. But it's a really, really deep race. I do like the last. I'll let you guys discuss that. T Spirit each way will be my nap of the day in the Portland. Just to recap, we're best us guaranteed all races at Doncaster here. We're top price all runners on the St. Ledger as well, so you will not get better price anywhere else. We're five places in the Portland, four places in the last. You've got your offers on the prices. I think that's about it. Brilliant. <laughs> Good stuff. It's been a pleasure. It we'll is. let you go. Kills, take it away. Why is Sonny Liston going to win the last race? Uh, I don't think he's a cracking horse. It just things haven't dropped right for him. I mean, without... Without uh, your other horse, Jimmy Hendricks, he's won the Hunt Cup by miles, isn't he? Uh, but he won, you know, he won his uh, he won his side in the Hunt Cup. He was then was it fifth, fifth, at, Goodwood. fifth at Goodwood? Didn't pan uh, out for him. Didn't pan out for him there. Uh, fourth last time didn't pan out for him there. And we know that Ryan Moore's asked for another crack on him as well. He did say so he got off know. and he said, "Please, third time lucky." Yeah, I'll get it right uh, this time. Yeah. Not he's, that any of it's been his fault so no, far. No, he's a good horse. And I think, you know, now, now he's going back on a straight course. Bear in mind, the last time he, the last time he ran on a straight course, he was winning his side in the Hunt Cup by miles. Uh, and he's not much higher now in the handicap. He's, you know, he's still only four. Uh, I think he might just be better than these. Now, obviously, there's a horse in there's a horse in the race dropping back in trip. I've got some history with this season called Millbosk. Mm, I remember I was you. Going to ask oh, about you tipped this probably. a while yeah, ago. Now, no, no, the, the, the thing about this is right. I, I, I've got such a bad memory, and I have various <laughs> bits and pieces that I have to change passwords on every six weeks or so. So I use horses to do it. And thankfully, Millbosk has just fallen off because I've been typing his name in nonstop, <laughs> uh, 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 and he's cost me a fortune. I thought, you know, a horse has finished third to St Mark's Basilica in a French Derby. Uh, I did get a text last time and said he's got a massive wind issue, you know. Uh, you know what I mean? And I thought he was going. I thought he was going to hack up last time, and he didn't ran no sort of race at all. He didn't even shape like a horse that wanted a drop in trip. To be honest, he never travelled through it at all. But he has been quite well supported. It'll be interesting to see what happens to him today. Um, he is obviously lobbed in on three-year-old form, mm. uh, but I'm leaving him alone today, uh, and it's going to be Sonny Liston all the way. Boom. Let's hope so. What do you think, Keith? Uh, well, I can. I just can see the Sunny Liston point, but I can raise you in terms of relevant form because I've got a horse, I've, I've, a horse that's been second in a Lincoln right here in, in brunch. I thought with four places that are getting paid each way by Betfred, the enhanced place terms. This horse has got loads and loads of form at the track. People think he's a bit of a soft ground horse, eh, which obviously is not going to be a bad thing today. But I think it's just that all this form here, soft ground yeah, in yeah, the spring. I isn't could it? easily have mentioned brunch. Yeah, yeah he's a you know he's player. been second in a, like he was second, albeit a well beaten second in a listed race here on uh, the first day of the season this year. You know, seen as too good for the Lincoln, so he was in in, in March, and now he's back here off a of mark ninety nine, I think, which is two pounds higher than when he was second in the Lincoln. So clearly on a sort of mark where he can do some damage 
exactly the sort of horse you want to be using in an enhanced each way market. So brunch each way is my bet in this one. Okay, brilliant. Brilliant. Well, no, we don't want that to happen. So now best bets of the day. Let's start with you. Uh, simply Sondheim for me, just that winning record and the, the the way it all looks like today is the day for him. Kills? Sonny Liston. Ryan's going to get it Yay! right. Yay! We're in agreement here. I, I really hope he's going to pull it together. He kind of deserves to. Um, and I think everything, if ever, is going to be a day, providing luck prevails. Yeah. Today is going to be the day. What's what's the plans for everyone this weekend? Have you been here all week? No, I've not been here at all this week. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't go racing as much as I used to. I used to do the tracks, but not anymore. So uh, I've no idea what I'm going to do today. I'm, I'm at leisure. Yeah. You're here for the day to watch? Yes. Good stuff, good stuff. And have you had a few anti-post bets? Or uh, are you finding your way along as the day progresses? I'm just going to be... I'll end up backing about four in a Portland, I reckon. That's just mm. by far the best betting rest of the day. Scattergun race, isn't it? Oh, it properly is. It's, uh, yeah, but it's the sort of race I love. So I'm going to be thoroughly enjoying the Portland and... Hopefully, I get to see a little bit of history in the ledger too uh, with Desert Hero. Mm. And Kiels, what are you going to do for yourself throughout the day? I hope you're going to be here cheering. Yeah, oh, I'm going to be. Race. I've been, I've, you know, I was here at seven o'clock yesterday morning, unloading all the camera equipment with the producers and all that. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. We went on a game of golf at a lovely track called Wheatley up the road, uh, and uh, today is just going to be all about the racing. We're staying overnight. Oh, very relaxed. Back home in the morning, yeah. Okay. And have Lovely. you had much anti-post action? Uh, yes. I backed Kings Lynn, Arrest, and Spy Catcher. Okay. Good stuff. And you're going on holiday on Monday, so you're going to be oh. off for a few weeks. Yep. Yep. Three and a bit, four weeks. I feel like I've heard about this holiday for so long, and the enthusiasm seems to have sort of died in the last couple of days. Oh, that's because I'm tired. Because we've had, you know, like I said, we drove Listing up at We drove up at four o'clock yesterday morning, so... <laughs> So yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be I'll be ready for it on Monday. Brilliant, good stuff, Keith and Paul. Thank you very very much indeed for joining me live on the program for What a Shout. Great to have you on board too. We'll see you again next week. Goodbye and happy punting.